Hi drummers, hope you're well. Another little beginner's one for you today. This is a 16th note feel or a 16th note beat, this time when you play it with two sticks on the hi-hat, like a single stroke roll. Typically you'd play this when the overall tempo of the music was a bit faster than the version of this groove with one stick on the hi-hat, or if you just wanted the slightly different feel uh, that the two hands on the hi-hat gives you. It sounds like this. So single stroke roll, man. This is where it all begins. If you, anyway, if you had lessons with me, I think most with most uh, drum teachers or when you first start playing the drums, it's usually the most instinctive thing people do when they first sit down at uh, the kit. And that is a single stroke roll, as in right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Or if you're um, left-handed, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. It's all based on that. So... What we're doing here is we're playing that over on the hi-hat. 16th notes, right? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. When you hear a, a drummer or a musician counting with that one E and a thing, well, each of those sounds is one of the hits, right? Of, of 16th notes or semiquavers. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. That's the basic idea. Now, like pretty much all the main grooves that we start off with uh, when we're first beginning on the drums, at its heart, this one has bass drum on beat one, snare drum on beat two, bass drum on beat three, and snare drum again on beat four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The difference with this particular groove is, whereas, whereas with a lot of the beats we play when we first start, we're in this position with our lead hand, so-called, like doing the, all the work on the hi-hat. In this case, both hands on the hi-hat. And so, I'm gonna play it here in the right-handed fashion, what will happen here is, unusually for a beginner's type of groove, I guess, or for a groove that we play early in our drumming career, what happens is our right stick is actually going to come across to play the backbeat on the snare drum. Remember, a backbeat is a big hit on beats two and beats four. Almost always that's played with our left stick, if you're right-handed and playing like this. In this case, your right stick is going to kind of, kind of come across to the snare drum to do it. Remember, super important point, it's a single stroke roll all the way, one stick then the other. Here it comes really, really slow. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and kick snare kick snare. So your bass drum and your snare drum are playing quarter notes, and your sticks are playing all the way sixteenths. And ah, remember, if you find this tricky at first, completely cool, age-old thing, and a great bit of advice that will stand you, in my opinion, in really good stead all the way through your drumming, is to just go slow, think it out, and at first don't play faster than you can think if you're finding it tricky, and just say to yourself the moments, the co little combinations out loud. Age-old thing, set the precedent in your nervous system, get your hands in your feet, get, you know, to, to play through it, and just give them a chance to see these combinations happening. The very beginning step in the whole process of, process of learning this and having it going really, really smoothly is just doing that, man. Showing your hands and your feet the right things uh, in the right order. When we see a drummer like on stage or in a video or whatever playing smoothly it's easy to think that that's what they've always done you that drumming is just sitting down and playing fast it isn't man at the beginning you've got to build the thing you have got to build it from the ground up man especially a groove like this where typically for beginners it's a little bit challenging just that first man so we're going to do that now i'm going to play it in the right-handed fashion beat one one e and a is going to be one hi-hat and kick e and a. and then beat two two which is the snare drum E and duh. You got it? So beat one, one E and a uh, beat two, two E and duh. Beat three, three E and duh, four E and uh, you got it? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a That's the idea. Now, for when beginners first start playing this, uh, some of the things that 
come unstuck or challenging at first typically are most commonly around the uh, where the snare drum hit is, right? So you see a lot of beginners going and like instinctively wanting to hit the snare drum with their left stick because maybe it's what you've done up to that point. That's cool and one to be aware of, but if you find yourself doing that, no big deal. I just go back to making sure you're hitting it with the right, take your time. And the other one I would say is drummers doing this, beginners, one E and a two E like wanting to go back to the hi-hat with their right stick, probably because again, if that up to that point, they maybe played some like straight eights type of feel and stuff like that, where your right stick always plays on the hi-hat. So it kind of instinctively goes back. But remember, big important point, it's a single stroke roll all the way. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Here it comes. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So your sticks are playing right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. One. And a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and up. Cool. Now, what we always do in the sessions uh, that I teach anyway, is once we get a, a groove like that going, the next thing is just putting it into a little like loop, a little four bar loop usually with a drum fill at the end. So let's do that now. We'll play three bars of this groove. A drum, uh, beginners are really often, uh, quite often I find confused about what a bar is. A bar in this case is two bass drums and two snare drums. When we count up to four, that's one bar in the music. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a is one bar, right? is one bar of music. So we're gonna play three bars of the groove there, three bars of the drum beat. Then for a drum fill, we're gonna do the simplest uh, thing we can, which is continue those sixteenths or semi-quavers in this fashion. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Age old beginner's drum fill, but perfectly good one when you start. Uh, so continuing the exact same note value and tempo that we were on the hi-hat with a single stroke roll around the kit. Uh, first beat on the snare, second beat on the high tom, uh, third beat on the second tom here, and the uh, fourth beat on the floor tom. If you only have th like two tom toms, just go back to the snare for beat three. So here it comes. I'm going to play the whole four bar loop now. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, and a two E and a, three E and a, four. That's one bar, one E. That's two bars. One E and a two E and a. Okay, here comes the drum fill. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Back to the groove. That's one bar. That's two bars. That's the third. Here's the drum fill. Okay, we'll go a bit quicker. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, drum fill. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Cool, man. Brilliant. So really nice one to build some fluency and some coordination with that one. Like most of these grooves, I would say, uh, again, based on sort of working with tons and tons of beginners over the years, uh, is a little bit more tricky than some of the others that we do at, at first, just because of the different uh, layout of where your hands are. When you move around the kit here on the drum fill, uh, the thing I most often find with people is the trickiest moment on this one is when you crash back into the groove. So if you're assuming you want to hit a crash symbol, like drummers very often do, like the capital letter at the start of the sentence, assuming you want to hit a crash symbol at the start of your groove again, what's going to happen is if you're right-handed, you do right, left, right, left on the floor, Tom, then your right stick goes up to the crash symbol. And here's the bits that, again, most beginners find the, the trickiest at first, and I definitely did when I first did this. It's hitting the crash symbol and then resuming the two sticks on the hi-hat feel. What almost everybody does, and I can totally relate to it, totally understand why, is... Like, you kind of hit the crash and then you're like, oh, what happens here? Or, or even sometimes people go... And then already you're out of sync. Remember that crash symbol hit 
just is beat one, right? So the right, left, right, left, single stroke roll flow just continues at all times. So you go through the drum fill. And without any gap or, or pause, you then go up to the crash for beat one. E and a, two E and a. So that moment at the start of the drum groove, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Remember, if you went and resumed the groove without hitting the crash, you'd just go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Exactly the same as that, exactly the same rhythm and sticking and coordination and everything. It's just that on the one, literally the one itself, rather than going one, you'll go onto the crash. So your stick just takes a little journey to the crash symbol. Or another way of saying that that beginners very, very often say back to me is, oh, hang on a minute. So I'm just hitting my right stick on the crash and then left, right, left on the hi-hat and then carrying on as normal after that. So crash with the right, left, right, left, right on the snare, left, right, left. I'm going to play the whole loop one time uh, to finish off here. I'm going to start real slow. I'll actually start with the drum fill here and we'll just pick up a bit of speed as we go. And a two. Remember, it's right, left, right, left, all the way. That was the first bar. That was the second. That's the third bar. Okay, go a bit faster. And remember, three bars of the groove. Here's the drum fill. And a little faster. And literally count as you play. Two, three, four. Practice keeping track. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. One time again. Two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, huge thing, man. Just literally t t count as you play. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, and perhaps as you get a bit faster, just one, two, three, four, just marking the quarter note pulse. And uh, that's really, really useful. There you're practicing so much stuff at once as a beginner that will stand you in good stead as you progress. Obviously you're learning the beat itself, but the coordination, the counting, absolutely massive. That ability to sort of keep track of where you are, which is like night and day difference when you start playing songs and especially following like charts and that kind of stuff. If you can keep track, like monitor where you are, keep count of like the number of repeats you've done of something, it's absolutely huge when it comes to you know playing songs and all that kind of stuff. So that's that. That's a 16th note feel when you play it with two sticks on the hi-hat. Like I say, typically uh, we'd play that when the, um, when the music gets a little faster and the 16th note feel with one hand which I've also made a video about I'll link to that below um, often is like a little becomes a little bit of a stretch having said that they both have a different slightly different feel to them um, so there's definitely in my opinion for me territory where they'll both work just fine but actually you, you might even audition the, the this one-handed version and the two-handed version to see which one just feels right in the music you know and some tunes it just has to be a certain way to make it feel great I was talking to a student earlier and he, he was saying he was he's been working on it i keep forgetting by michael mcdonald but um he's been playing it with two sticks on the hi-hat man and for me like that's Jeff Picaro, one of the all-time greats. Like Jeff Picaro from Toto playing a single-handed 16th note feel. And if you play it with two, in my opinion, it just, just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel authentic. Or it doesn't feel like it did in the first place anyway. anyway you might play it and it sounds great in its own way, but it doesn't feel like the Jeff Picaro thing. On the other hand, you might be playing a song with a two-handed groove uh, and like it has to be the two hands to work. you know. And there's definitely for me like a, a territory of tempo where they both fit. But um, sometimes one just feels right. Obviously, when you're playing it with two sticks on the hi-hat, you are losing one note. And that is the hi-hat note when you hit the snare drum, right? Because, well, obviously, your right stick that would have played the hi-hat 
goes over to the snare. So you are sacrificing that. So it does give it a slightly different feel. But having said that, it does massively facilitate playing it faster. So uh, they're both useful. You need to know them both, man, as a beginner drummer and as a drummer who's, progress who's progressing along. Thanks a million for watching. As always, really, really appreciate it. Any questions about that or anything else, give us a shout. Uh, thanks so much for all the video requests. I've had quite a lot of people asking, especially members asking me about, uh, can I do some of these, basically, like, basic recaps of basic grooves and um yeah so here you go man there'll be a few more popping up uh soon thanks a million for watching please like share and subscribe thanks to all the amazing people uh, who've done that and thanks uh, as well as always to all the people who've supported this channel via my buy me a coffee support page thanks so much for the coffees today uh, uh lewis and tim today thanks so much for buying me a coffee guys massively appreciate it i'm so glad you're digging these videos and finding them helpful and uh thanks to all the amazing members who signed up as well you can also sign up as a monthly member of this channel uh, for 10 pounds a month you'll be supporting it helping it grow getting a ton of features in return like a customized practice plan a complimentary zoom session and a whole load of other great features members videos drum support a whole load of other things as well uh, so if you're interested in that please check that out in the description below any questions give us a shout have fun see you soon